intersection of where nonprofit meets for profit. <laughs> doesn't it kind of make you want to cry or does it make your arm hairs go, oh my God, my arm hairs are up. This makes us tingle. This has been coming for a while. Years in the making. And well, here, maybe less than that, but it feels like years. It feels like years. Yeah. And here we are. We're just and doing here it. We are. Taking imperfect action. I am Dr. Sharon Elephant, the nonprofit plug. And I am Amber the strategy specialist. And together we are the, the business, business plugs. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to today's episode. We are going to be introducing us, tell you about what the business plugs are, what we do, what we do for you, and then we will take life from there. Yes. So where do we start? I mean, because I <laughs> we have been crafting, <sighs> crafting, crafting the perfect menu for all clients. We want the best product suite that brings everybody the type of support they need, whether it's like actually building your business or maybe it's a downloadable workbook, a checklist, maybe it's a follow-up call to the Secretary of State. We want all of it ready just for you guys. Yep, we wanna meet you exactly where you're at because well, as entrepreneurs ourselves, we've been there. We're, we've been through the same stages. <laughs> And those stages are blood, sweat, tears, and a lot of tears. And some of them last longer than others. Yeah. And so we and know. And stomach pain. And stomach pain. Yeah. <laughs> and so we know exactly what it's like to be working within frameworks, budgets, timelines, and wanting to maximize absolutely everything to the nth degree to make sure that we're getting the biggest bang for the buck, that we're getting solid counsel. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about, I mean, because... It's not even really ever about price. No, you know what it's like really about is, is information out there good? What's the, and what's good information? How do you know it's good? Like, how do you know we're good besides us saying like, duh, we're the plugs, but how do you know what's good? And a lot of people want to Google and then they end up with us as clients and we're doing cleanup. So like, how do you know it's good info? Well, and that's just it. And you know, I mean, obviously I've worked with high net worth individuals, you know, who've been in the game a lot. They've got a lot to protect, you know, so multiple seven, eight figure people who have on staff, very credential people, yeah. people that they've worked with that have impeccable reputations mm -hmm. that are very fancy with fancy firms and fancy offices and fancy, just super fancy. Mm -hmm. And then they get themselves into a situation where it's a lawsuit, a PR thing, a copyright thing, or even just, you know, tax evasion yeah. <laughs> or those types of things. And you would think that these individuals, again, who have the resumes that are a mile long, mm -hmm. that are highly credentialed and highly recommended, would be able to take them to a point of, you know, success. And here's the problem, though, because that's what I thought, too. And here's the problem is you go to that person and it turns out they're only an expert at one area of all the shit you need support with. So that's why we came together because our forces combined, we're able to do a holistic approach to your entire business. Ooh, we're holistic business doctors. Mm. Well, I'm the nurse, I'm not the doctor. You're, You're the, the doctor. doctor. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> And we, and we like to be funny too, clearly. So we want to bring like laughter and joy and we want to make business entrepreneurship and business ownership fun because yeah. it's not fun a lot of the times. It really isn't. And for me specifically, it's all about from peace of mind and advocacy. Mm. So I solve problems at a high level and I've always thankfully been able to operate from a place of service and advocacy, you know, in my other careers or in my other endeavors outside of maybe, you know, some of the day-to-day -day businesses that I run. And I'm just, I'm grateful that I can serve in that capacity. Yeah. And now thanks to a lot of our collaborations, you're bringing me into a world where I can serve at a higher level to people who need that representation. But to that point, like let's expand upon it. So obviously you've been in business, you know, your stuff, you yourself have hired great people, great mm -hmm. professionals to represent you and lots of your business endeavors only to 
to find out that something has fallen through the cracks and you're wondering like a lot of times how did it fall through the cracks yeah i know i for real like i wake up going what the fuck i mean you had this person on retainer Mm -hmm. you you have the checklist Mm -hmm. of everything that was supposed to be happening and then here we are and come to find out too like i only get to learn about some of this stuff when i ask some of these credentialed people questions so i'm like but like i didn't know these questions to ask and now I ask annoyingly amounts of questions because I want to fucking know how to run my business appropriately and save myself money and make money. And then for us to be able to make you guys money, like, but how does anybody even know it, what questions to even ask? And that's just the whole thing. So me, I oftentimes over communicate and over complicate things, but that's because we are leaving no stone unturned. So we have to keep doing the deep dive of asking all these questions and questions. Are you sure? Are you sure? Check with this. Where's the source document? What rabbit hole did we go down today? (laughs) So many rabbit holes. (laughs) Can we just add queen of rabbit holes to our thing? Let me just add to just so like people know between the two of us, we have over 20 years of experience in entrepreneurship. So it's not like we're new to the game, but we learned a lot of the stuff through education we have, we do have credentials and academics, but even more important, we learned by trial and error and a lot by error so that you guys don't have to make those errors. Exactly. Lots of errors over 20 years of errors. You know what I call it? I call it 364 days of failure. And with the one day of failure, booms, blossoms. That's just it. I mean, I even did a podcast episode failing my way to millions and that is literally, that's a book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. New business book, new business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. And it really is. I mean, because at the end of the day, all of this information of course is online, but it, can you piece it together? Do you know what applies to you? Because it's not a one size fits all. Yeah. Everything, everything is very customizable, you know, and, and it's just the little small nuances. And like you said, if you don't know the right questions to ask and for whatever reason, these individuals are not, giving this information freely. Mm -hmm. And so I've gone through trying to figure it out myself. And I don't know if it's because, you know, anytime you have counsel, it's obviously a trade time for money, Mm -hmm. you know, so maybe in order to give you that white glove service, they'd have to charge you $500 an hour, but maybe that's not in people's budgets or the going rate is 250 an hour. And like, like most of us, we love to coach early stage entrepreneurs. We're not focused on the ones that are already making millions, although we're going to add that to our repertoire soon, but we like to focus on early stage entrepreneurs and help everyone get on the same playing field so that everyone has the same access to support for their business. Well, yeah. And that's just what we love. And then, and then Sharon, tell our audience full transparency. So, You book out discovery calls Mm -hmm. and now I get to join in on it to make sure that we are covering all bases. And in the past, the discovery calls were 20, 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, I've extended it (laughs) because we have to do the deep dive because I don't want to, I don't want to start from a place that isn't stable foundationally. And not only that, we have to know the whole picture. So just a yes or no answer to do you, let's just talk finances, for example, because that's our most recent one. Just knowing whether you track your finances isn't enough of an answer for us. We have to deep dive into those finances. We have to see every single transaction of the month and for the maybe even the past year or however you've been in business. And we have to explain as to why each part is actually connected. So that 10, 15 minute, 20 minute consultation does turn into almost 45 minutes to an hour because we have to see the full picture. Yeah. And, you know, and clients are sometimes like taken aback. They're like, wait, you know, my last so-and-so, you know, didn't request all this. Yeah. Why do you need it? But quickly, once we do it, once there's a back and forth, mm-hmm. and then we are able to identify some things that have fallen through the cracks, yep. you know, they're like, Oh, I get it now. And then they're like, but I don't understand. Why didn't the last person do it? And that's I'm what like, everyone exactly. says. That's Every what- single client says, why didn't the last person do that? Because we're obsessed with knowing the whole story so that we can change the story. Yeah. And that's really what makes us phenomenal. Yeah. Is because we 
frankly, we care a lot. Yeah, sometimes more than the client, okay? So and listen, the, the good ones are going to win this time. The good ones win, okay? The good guy wins. Yes. Ultimately, it's to put more money in your pocket. Like, we do what we can to keep our pockets full. We want your pockets full. It's a win-win situation. And so for us to be able to put together, like, now we do free lunch and learns every single week for nonprofit leaders and executives. We're going to be having a free lunch and learn for business in the LLC round too. Some of it may overlap here and there because there's some similar topics on financial management and, thing, and compliance and things like that. Yep. We want to be able to have a whole plug of resources so we can plug you all in. Like every week you get plugged in with us yeah. every week. What are some other topics that we might cover? Um, well, big on risk management and sustainability. Mm. So, you know, with, with Sharon, and I think you'll, you can be able to tell our distinct personalities and our skill sets, we're actually a great fit with one another because Sharon is all about development mm -hmm. and expansion mm -hmm. and vision casting. And I'm about sustaining yeah. and managing risk because we want to keep it. Right. And obviously we're continuously wanting to improve. She's a freak in the Excel sheets. Yes, definitely that. But it doesn't make sense to build something magnificent and then for it all to crumble. Yeah. Either because of poor counsel, poor planning, poor management, et cetera. So I always have my risk management hat on. Yeah. And then we I play like, like this good cop, bad cop thing. Oh, yeah. 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 Those we're, are fun. Yeah. Role play. Role play. <laughs> We do whatever's best for you guys. So sometimes one of us has got to be the bad one. And one of us is going to be the good one, but it always works out in the end. It's always in your best interest. Yes. Always in your favor to set you up for success because what's the point, right? Yeah. Right. Some of the other topics we might cover, we kind of touched on a little bit financial management and diving deep into your financials so we can see your overall history, accessing grants, whether you're a nonprofit or for-profit understanding even we have some stuff coming up to partner with the small business divisions throughout LA County and throughout the nation since they're getting millions and millions of dollars in grants and have free services to provide. We want to bring these resources to you guys. We also want to be able to really enhance the lunch and learn with topics maybe that you guys want to hear about. Yeah. And, and frankly, the uh, items that we're discussing in the lunch and learns along with the videos that you mm -hmm. give in your Facebook group, along with the supporting downloads, I mean, they are golden. Yeah. Golden. So if you're willing, and again, back to meeting you where you're at, mm -hmm. right. And yeah. being, and being considerate of your budget is to give you these incredible resources. So if you're willing to spend the time, you're set up for success, you yeah. know, and then, and then you use us accordingly. And even if it is just as a resource to support us here and there, but as your business grows and you need more, we're here to serve you at literally every level. We're getting very creative. Yeah. And even if there's stuff like specifically you want to hear about or you want to know about, drop that shit in the links below, in the comment section below. We always want to hear about it. We love being able to offer as much resources as we can. To support you. And we don't know if you don't tell us. And of course, back to the conversation that you may not even know. Mm -hmm. And so this is the constant evolution, which is why we have to work closely as a team. And I'm, I'm just grateful that I've gotten to the point um, with my business firm that I only take on clients that actually want to be part of the process. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I do my very best not to overwhelm my clients with information that is going to be a time suck. But at the end of the day, you have to be part of the planning part of the process because there's checks and balances. So you have to check my blind spots too, yeah. because I'm not there with you day to day as much as I would love to be. I'm not. So you have to over communicate your operations or your hmms or your gut feelings. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, we really get to a cellular level yeah. with the way that we coach and counsel and represent our clients. So I kind of want to tell everybody like a little bit of our stories and kind of how we got into this and we'll dive into you first and then, and then I can tell my story, but talk to us a little bit about like, take us back. Cause your story is pretty fucking like, mm. whoa, like, whoa. <laughs> so like narrow it down or kind of shorten for us, but like start from when you were young, 
Cause that's your entrepreneur life started, started you really young. young. Yeah. And so my mom owned a dance studio mm -hmm. and my father was fighting leukemia. Mm. So dance studios open after school from 4 PM and they stay open till 9 PM. And obviously you have the, the dance teachers, but then there's the behind the scenes administrative that has to happen. Right. I E making sure that the classes are staffed. There's enough people in the classes, tuition, communication, special events, recitals, all that good yeah. stuff. So at the age of eight or nine, you know, I'm collecting payments. I'm taking, you know, going into each class and doing the, the roster. The age of eight <laughs> or nine is where it started for her. Okay. Yeah. And I, of course, you know, those of you that have grown up in family businesses, you know that you start early. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, there, there was some, you know, computer systems. There was some systemization way back then. And reconciling the books and understanding what needed to, yeah, reconciling the books at eight. <laughs> Why am I not even surprised? Not even surprised. You know, really and truly. Um, and, and of course, those of you who have grown up in a family business, I, by the age of 11, 12, realized that other people had lives and all we did was work seven days a week. And frankly, um, you know, we, my mom and her businesses were always artistic successes. She mm -hmm. definitely led from her heart. Uh, so there was no you know, boistering, oh, I'm a CEO, oh, I'm, you know, six figures, none of that. She just gave and gave and gave, honestly, to a fault, wow. which was exhausting. Yeah. And I ended up resenting it. So I wanted nothing to do with entrepreneurship because I was so bitter about how entrepreneurship had treated my mom, mm. right? So because this was before what exists now, again, all of the resources where you can come in and vent and get support and, and realize that you're not alone. So community that exists today, honest to goodness, -existent. it was non-existent wow. then, you know, and it would have been life saving, mm -hmm. um, you know, for me back then, because ended up presenting the dance studio, left home early as 16, mm -hmm. um, ran the streets, you know, did business in the streets. Mm -hmm. So that made me a very sharp businesswoman. And then um, by the time I realized that was not sustainable <laughs> because I was going to end up in the feds, um, I thought to myself, Self. Okay, how do I get? <laughs> the funniest part is, is she probably literally was sitting at the street corner going, self, self. Okay, this is not sustainable business practices. It's not. And so, ironically, I'm like, you know what? I want to be a juvenile probation officer. <laughs> so, fun story. I was there to audition for juvenile probation officer. Actually, it was for Metro. I wanted to be a police officer first, mm -hmm. and they politely declined me. <laughs> for obvious reasons, because I was always in handcuffs downtown because they were right. trying to figure out what I was doing downtown at age 16. Yep. Right. So, um, ended up being able to work within the courts. I had to seal my own records. That's where my legal background comes in. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Contract queen. You get this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So seal the records, um, work for the County, you know, single mother, but it's great because you've got the money, you've got the support, you've got the great shift, the day shift, you've got the health care. And then one day um, my mom's husband comes and knocks on my door and says, hey, your mom can't run what was now the dance competition. So she had pivoted from dance studio to producing to, dance yeah. competitions. Right. And, you know, she was in insane debt, uh, three mortgages, owned her best friend, a lot of money. You know, her take home was 20 grand a year back then I was making 45, you know, at, at the age of 23. Um, and I'm just like, why would I want to come work for you? Like all I've seen is nothing positive from that. Yeah. But heartache. a lot of heartache. I, obviously there was an intervention bigger than me and I, I, I joined my mom and her dance competition and we quickly got her out of debt, um, doubled the business, doubled the top line quickly. And, you know, it wasn't emotional to me. Mm -hmm. So all I had to do was master the systems and the processes and see what everybody else was doing and do it better, but specifically do it with the higher level of customer service. So I was always coined when I worked for the courts as customer service, Barbie. So I'm working in the jail and look, and I'm a straight advocate. I'm advocating for the INS holds yeah. and all the awful things that go on in the jail. <laughs> I'm like, you know, these people's time, it's important. Like they have to get back to work and they're like, well, they're defendants. They broke the law. And I'm like, they're innocent until proven guilty. That we is get right. them back to their that families. Right. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I guess that kind of just illustrates my DNA. So when you see me ultra passionate, when you see me coming from an ultra stage of service, 
it's because I, I've always just wanted to fight and make right yeah. situations pure that we could control. Advocacy. Pure advocacy. Yeah. We can only control what we can control. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I want to master that and I want you guys to master it too and yeah. be your own best advocate. Wow. So this is what's so cool to me is she, Amber, but we are Shamber. <laughs> we'll go into that story another day. Her advocacy is so strong that that's kind of what led me to Amber. So I've known Amber for years. We met in a gym at 5 a.m. in the parking lot because this was like, we couldn't go inside the gym. It was the beginning of COVID. So it's been a few years, 5 a.m. at the gym, running this freaking corner and back to the fire hydrant and back. Oh my God, that shit was the worst. Hey, Shout out yeah. one mode. <laughs> <laughs> we love you and hate you. <laughs> and I don't even know how we got on business topic or if we were just like both in dying pain from squats and we started talking business or I don't even know how it happened. And Oh, I'm always going to talk business. Yeah. And I think that's what I must Yeah, I'm at the too. club talking business. Yeah. Like, so oh, which is true. Cause natural. we were at the club Saturday talking business. Talking business. Yeah. yeah. With a few drinks in and, it was still solid business talk. Let me tell you. <laughs> Complete business. But I think we got some clients out of that night. We definitely did. So we just kind of started talking and we kind of go back and forth on some business stuff. But then I would see Amber like implementing all these, like, let me do these 360 reviews for you. And I was like, what the fuck is she doing? Like, I know her, but not that well. And it was always just a so little gym. invasive. Yeah. <laughs> very- but I kind of like invasive. So I like kind of was like, really curious. Yeah. And it wasn't until a few years later that I actually, I, I had to get the balls to come and ask Amber, like, damn, can you like take a peek at my business? Cause I thought I had to have my business in a position ready to be looked at, not knowing that exactly what she does and the advocacy she does was when I should have pulled her in at the very beginning, it would have saved me a shit ton of money, mm-hmm. a shit ton of tears and a shit ton of trips to the bathroom. Yeah shit ton literally literally no yeah. really and truly yeah but that's that's always my thing is that people will pull me aside privately after a long period of time that's what i did and go hey what you know i i feel awkward mm-hmm. I'm a little embarrassed mm-hmm. you know people get very weird around money yeah and the conversations about money look we've all made mistakes with money yep. personally and professionally yep. Yep. None of us are perfect. Definitely. So let's just rip the bandaid off. Yeah. See where we're at. Do the percentages, mm-hmm. you know, correct any mistakes, control what we can control. And then we're rocking and rolling. Yeah. You know, there's no judgment here. Yeah. You know, but you have to course correct immediately. You have to cut your losses quick, but it's so quick. tied in emotionally. And I, and yeah. so I know that because I watched my mother do it for years. Mm-hmm. And so now I'm just grateful that A, it's starting to be um, a more talked about topic. Yeah. And I'm proud that you and I can not talk about it with one another, with you, with our clients, and make it normal. That Make it normal. See, and I think that's the thing. And I think people are starting to get a little bit more comfortable in sharing the failures and the shit that's hard. I know I definitely am an open book, and I will share, at this point, I will share anything about the the heartache, the bad days, the shitty, shitty days, the really good days, all the parts of business development, because I still want help. Amber and I still want to build and we want everyone else to be able to build. That's why I call it failure is funny. I think it's the funniest shit ever. No, really and truly. And, and I love that we have this platform to discuss it openly and give people the courage to, and then again, the transparency, you know, I have no problem because I'm, I'm big on receipts. Mm-hmm. So I'll, you know, we'll drop whatever tax returns, QuickBooks, yep. whatever, yep. just to illustrate, Hey, we should have zigged instead of zagged. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we zagged a few times. We've, we've yeah, zagged, we've zagged a few times. Mm-hmm. And again, you know, you can't just sit there and beat yourself up over it. You got to move on. You got to course correct. You got to know why you did what you did. You have to vet the logic. And so that's another thing that we do is that when we start to do an analysis, not just a financial analysis, but an mm-hmm. operational mm-hmm. analysis, we put everything on a spreadsheet in columns and we talk and we start to have in-depth conversations about what we value, you know, and, and we put logic in where we're at today because where does we're at it today, make sense? And then we review it, however, so often mm-hmm. because we're God willing going to continue to evolve. 
Yeah. So what we thought was sound today or applicable today will not be the case in yeah. one year. Or may not even work for every single business entrepreneur. Exactly. And so that's why we build in logic. But the only way you can do that is number one, have your metrics, mm -hmm. get in there. And so yeah. the other thing that we are implementing ASAP is with my businesses, because again, this is just normal for me. So we're always looking at metrics daily, weekly, monthly, because we do All it from a, pers um, a protective yeah. standpoint, right? Because we don't ever want a team to be working harder, um, larger volume that we're not mm -hmm. aware of. We don't want budgets to get out of control, et cetera. But even Sharon, we started to do a deep dive into metrics because we, one of the reasons for this podcast is we want to take our impact to the next level, yep. which means we are going to start playing a new game online, i.e. we are going to have to start monitoring mm -hmm. our growth, our viewership, mm -hmm. and so forth. So every Sunday is going to be metric Sunday, analysis statistics Sunday. Sunday, analysis Sunday. Yep. Yeah. And, and we're just, you know, and, and we're going to create this dashboard spreadsheet with absolutely everything that we can track mm -hmm. down to the nth degree, even if it's completely insignificant at the moment. Right. But it, it, it's always significant because it's always, it's significant. always significant. And so this is something that I do. So it's, you know, and, and, and I like to use business alongside with the logic of fat loss. Hmm. There's so much intertwining there, right? Like everyone, everyone understands fat loss too, because it's, it's not, it's complex, but it's not maybe mentally complex, but the math isn't complex. No, the math isn't complex and it's all emotional, yeah, all, all emotional. So yeah. it does kind of align with entrepreneurs who are yeah. still in that phase of fear, not trusting themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, every, every day we wake up. So the thing about entrepreneurship is we wake up broke every day. Yeah. You got to go out and get that transaction. Yep. And if you don't get up, that transaction isn't happening unless you've just built so much goodwill and you have so much momentum. Again, hence the reason we're doing this because I come from brick and mortar. You know, I made my money before the internet. Mm -hmm. So this is a new game to me. And that's why, you know, I'm incredibly grateful to have your support because I am crystal clear after 20 years of entrepreneurship, you can't do it alone. You alone can only take it so far. Critical. You can't do it alone. And, th and that's what I was doing. I was truly trying to do it alone, but I was also trying to prove a point. And I don't come from the entrepreneur life. I come from the life of, I didn't even know that like entrepreneurship was a thing. I thought the only professional life was you go to college, you get your master's, you get a your doctorate. Yeah, your doctorate, <laughs> I have my doctorate. You get a nine to five job. You're on a W-2 payroll with your normal taxes and shit every year. And I created the entrepreneurship life out of necessity because actually because of my doctorate, I couldn't get a job. I couldn't get a fucking job because of my doctorate. I was teaching and I still teach. I'm an adjunct professor, but like I couldn't get a fucking job. So I was like, well, I am an expert in some shit and let me just see if I can, you know, help some people out and by helping some people out, I was like, oh damn, like I really am like a nonprofit expert and I've been doing this shit professionally for so long. I'm gonna tailor it my way and how I see people need it. And I'm gonna ask the people how they need it and kind of create this program. And I saw this gap in the nonprofit sector and kind of got into it. Luckily, luckily I was dating this fucking loser and I had made some money with him. So I withdrew all the money and I used that to start my nonprofit. Uh, the nonprofit plug, not a nonprofit, nonprofit plug LLC. And I used that to fund my business in my initial start. And it ended up just kind of like, damn, like this shit is really good and successful. And so I turned it into my full-time gig. I was probably doing nine to five and my hustling, I would say maybe for about a year, which I will say that's not normal. I would say usually it takes people probably quite a few years to get that transition over. But I've kind of said, fuck it and went full-time with my full on business. And now I have a firm and offer full range of services. And in collaboration with the strategy specialist and the nonprofit plug, we just are bringing everything to the table. But I didn't come from like, like and my parents, oh my God, they were so they're scared. Freaking out. They were freaking the fuck out. And they, they actually like, 
don't call us for money. Don't ask for help. Like you can like, it was like the first day I ever brought home a pit bull, like in 2002, first time I ever brought home a pit bull. And they were like, you're cut off. You're, you're not a part of this family. No, they weren't really like that bad, but they were kind of like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. And then they fell in love with the pit bull. The pit bull became my dad's best friend. She ended up being his caretaker when he had cancer. And that's exactly how it happened with my business. They just needed to see that like, there are other opportunities for, to having a professional life. Professional life doesn't equal W2 professional life equals anything in your professional life, whether you want to have your own business, whether you want to keep your W2 nine to five, you can have both plenty of people. Like they aren't ever going to give up their nine to five and they're going to have both lives because they want to. And that's fine. And that's fine too. And I think that's totally appropriate, especially for people who are like empty nesters. So either people who aren't already, you know, building relationships and families who have that extra time or empty nesters, for an example, to reallocate that. So keep the nine to five, but then, you know, maybe get that boring business or or walk out and and do that consulting thing that you've been wanting to do forever, you know? But I will say this, once once Sharon let me in her world, and when I say let me in her world, I mean her QuickBooks, okay? Because... (laughs) Let me tell you I was like, okay, here's my login and password. Yeah, because that's the one that nobody wants to show. And, and I'm like, why? Well, I do know why. Because I have solved so many mysteries with a QuickBooks login. Oh, yeah. Because I get into that general ledger. And I'm just like, this is Amber. <laughs> it is. <laughs> oh, what's over there? Oh, oh. wait. What's over there? And then it takes you down another rabbit hole. Let me click this button. <laughs> Look, you can learn a lot in a general lecture, ladies and gentlemen. But the one thing that I learned quickly was what she just said. Within a year and a half, she had exponential growth. Mm -hmm. And I know exactly why. She was doing the work. Mm -hmm. That's what I admired about you the most is because you were doing the things that, number one, give me social anxiety. Um, But number two, you were doing it with such grace and with such a high level of conversion. And I was like, wow. You know, and, and... I might say like, you're a natural because you make it look natural, you know? So obviously I don't know the behind the scenes of what you have to do to prepare or make it all happen. But I quickly realized that's how she got from there to there so fast. Yeah. You know? And honestly too, it's really like my love for people. And this is where my parents really did come into play because my mom and dad had this open door policy growing up, which we can argue on whether that was a good or bad thing, but we had this open door policy and it was, we are going to help everyone Mm -hmm. and anyone. Mm -hmm. And thanks to my mom and dad, I had the same sort of character of like wanting to help anyone and everyone, even some of the people that like probably shouldn't have helped, but I wanted to help everyone no matter what. And so it's once my parents realized what I was doing with my, the nonprofit plug as a business, they kind of were like, holy shit, this is fucking cool. Now they think it's the coolest thing in the ever. whole entire world. They'll be sporting NPP and they're always like, they show up to the lunch and learns and my mom likes to provide her commentary. And honestly, when I kind of think about it, even though they came from a W2 nine to five life, uh-huh. they were also entrepreneurs within their field. My mom was a teacher. My dad was a firefighter and he was an investigator. So just think about it. Like teachers have to innovate within their nine to five job. Forest firefighters have to innovate. They're out and think quick on their feet. So it only made sense to me that I went into this entrepreneur life. And and to thank my mom and dad, Ma and Pa, mm-hmm. we don't call them Ma and Dad, they're just really Ma and Pa. Mm-hmm. And like to have them on board with that and to think it's so cool, like it's just a huge blessing. And, you know, yeah, here we are diving into the details. Yeah. And so that's the other thing too, is not everybody's built for the entrepreneur life, but there's the, this new buzzword, entrepreneurship. Mm, right? Okay. Yep. So it's when you're either working in an organization that is either supportive or not supportive, but you are just dead fast about taking on more responsibility, making it better, making mm-hmm. it great, building your skill set, personally developing within your job, even if it is a W2 job to the point where you are showing up as your best version. And obviously you pray that you're in an organization that recognizes that, that reciprocates that yeah. and all that. And that's another thing that, that I talk about too, is the business owners that I do consult. I talk a lot about ethical entrepreneurship. Um, many of them, we start out, I start out very luxury mm-hmm. because I inform them, look, you are responsible for people's lives. Mm-hmm. You know, these people show up to support your dream. 
They are away from their families 10 hours a day because they believe in you. Right. This is a different right. level of responsibility, ladies and gentlemen. You know, it's far past the money. It's far past the bragging on social media. Because when you have, again, individuals that are joining you in, you know, your vision, I mean, A, well, it speaks to the fact that they believe in you. And that is something that you should cherish and protect to the best of your ability. Oof. Absolutely. You know, what makes me think of that, like it almost makes me get a little bit emotional because when I think about it like that and the type of business that we have, which is consulting to other people, it's, we literally are like convincing them to put their whole entire life in our hands. And, and I know over the past several years with the nonprofit plug, I've worked with hundreds of nonprofits primarily in Los Angeles, but throughout the country, we've got clients in about 15 other States and Thank God I am so confident in my ability to take care of these nonprofits that I'm comfortable bringing them on. But there's some some that have significant challenges. And every day, like if I'm going to be emotional about something, it's like, damn, am I providing the right support to that nonprofit so that that person doesn't lose their income? Yeah. And then the people that they're serving on the streets don't get fucked up also. Yeah. That's what makes my stomach still turn at night. And that's why we want to have the best resources and access to resources for everyone, because I want to make sure that everybody k keeps their business thriving. Because being a nonprofit founder, that's being an entrepreneur too. People don't really Absolutely. look at it as like entrepreneur life, but it is. If you start a nonprofit, you're your own boss. Sometimes if you end up being in the executive director role, if you start an LLC, even as a side hustle, like that's entrepreneur life. Yeah. And that's scary as a nonprofit founder because it's already like challenges with funding. Yeah. The nonprofit and, you know, world is, you know, cause in lunch and learns, we talk about it specifically about the expectations, mm -hmm. you know, so they're expected to operate lean. They're expected to basically in essence, not make mistakes, right? Because they're supposed to be repurposing any money that they've raised for the cause. Mm -hmm. So their margin for error has to be nothing. Yeah. You know, so you've got these new founders who are just like us learning as they go, but they're expected to not make mm -hmm. mistakes. Right. And it's, not only that, like your, your shit's public, public. So it's, like everybody can go look up your records and see what you're doing. And so we want to help you tell the story of your impact financially and on the streets in a way that you're not scrutinized. Exactly. It's a, it's a different level, but I love it so much because I wish that private for-profit mm -hmm. companies had to be exposed to that level, yeah. frankly. Okay. Oh God, that shit was funny. <laughs> <Woo -hoo. laughs> so now that I get to work with your clients where it is completely transparent, it is, it is a complete, it lights me up. It's a game to me Yeah. because I'm like, Oh, we're getting that stars. Yeah. You know, nobody's going to beat oh, us. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to get you that funding. We're going to get you that guide star and that charity navigator, perfect profile. We want to be able to introduce everyone to like the best funders of the world and partnerships. And that's, it's a lot of work. Yeah. It's a lot of work, but when you have your back end together, it's like, I can't, I can't wait for, for some of the, you know, clients that we've been working with mm -hmm. to, I, to get that level of confidence because they are going to be sassy. Mm -hmm. You know, like we say, when we coach them, you know, when it's time to ask, the ask is going to be so easy. Right. When you're like, yep, right. thought about that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Already have the answer to that. I yep. know how I'm serving. And have everything just completely done, transparent, yeah. quantified to the nth degree. Yeah. How could you not be confident? How could right. you not be certain? Ooh. The, okay. So Amber just like touched on the perfect word. Like, how I talked about how I feel so confident in my ability to coach these nonprofits. We want our nonprofit and for-profit founders, but especially you nonprofit founders, like so confident and so empowered that you know the ins and outs of your organization so that anybody cannot catch you off guard. Exactly. Cannot. That's our purpose. That's it. On right every there. level. On every level. Yeah. Oh, shit. I think we just solved the world's problems. Yep. Wow. Well, <laughs> I think we are done today. Yes. Thank you for joining us today. The nonprofit plug and the strategy specialist. And together 
We are the, the business, business plugs for Shamber. <laughs> Join us and drop your comments below. Let us know how we can serve you. Yep, we're here for all of it. Yeah, you better.